Shabbat Shalom. The first thing you need to know about Isaac is that his name was not supposed to be Isaac. It was going to be Shai. He was born 13 years ago on July 14th, and we looked at him, and we kissed him, and we called him Shai, but we kept the name to ourselves as it is tradition not to share the name until the bris. Something didn't feel right, and then the next day, Al and I looked at each other and we said, his name is Isaac, and thereafter, his name was Isaac. And I tell you, there was something very deep, dare I even say, providential in this. In this Parsha, the name Isaac appears for the first time long before his birth, which is actually depicted in next week's Parsha, Vayera. Today in Lech Lecha, God not only tells Abraham that Abraham will have a son, he commands Abraham to name his son Isaac. That's really something. Isaac is, depending on how you count it, he may be, he's the only person in the Bible God himself specifically names. In this Parsha, an angel of God names Ishmael, but God names Isaac. He picked out the name and he assigned it, forget the eight days or whatever until the bris, and the name God chose for the firstborn Jew means, well, no one has figured out exactly how to translate it, but it's either something like he who laughs or simply laughter. Think of it, the first Jew was named laughter. Here we are with our people in the midst of a war that is following the same kind of savage, unprovoked attack that has beset our people for millennia. And we're here today in this beautiful sanctuary to celebrate. But how can we celebrate? How can my family celebrate? My sister Ruthie, who lives in Tel Aviv and I think is zooming in right now, cannot be with us. She is helping the government with English language communications. Her son alone, my nephew, Isaac's first cousin, celebrated his birthday this week, his 38th birthday, in the reserves, away from his two children. Ruthie's son-in-law, Svika, is in the reserves too, away from his wife, my niece Avital, who, whose due date for her second child is today and is worried about how, sorry, how she is going to get from her front door to her bomb shelter with a child not yet three and a newborn in arms with a husband away at war. So I ask again, with all this, with the bombs flying and a kid from Isaac's own day school, the same day school as you heard that Rabbi Ain's kids went to and go to, getting assaulted on the streets of New Orleans the other day and sent to the hospital with a broken nose for the crime of defending the Israeli flag from being set on fire, how can we celebrate? Well, we can. We are here to celebrate. And indeed, we are in a sense commanded to celebrate. Isaac has reached the age of 13. He is assuming the responsibilities of a Jewish adult, as I did when I was 13 while the Vietnam War was still raging. And as my father, did when he was 13 in the middle of World War II. And as Ayala's father did when he was 13 in the middle of World War II. And as their fathers did in the era of the pogrom. And on and on back through time, this is the glory and burden of our people. We must celebrate even in the midst of horror and tragedy. But what exactly is it we're celebrating? After all, people turn 13 every day. Becoming a Jewish adult is a pain. Being a Jew is a pain. <laughs> Isaac, in his beautiful Devar Torah, evoked the anxiety of being a Jew. The fact that God promises Abraham he will make of us a great nation represents not only a reward, but as we see right now, a perpetual threat. A threat from the hostility and envy of others who would want to make us small or destroy us altogether. That's some prize we got. <laughs> 
It's the reason Jews have told some version of this joke forever. The Jew goes up to heaven and asks God whether the Jews are the chosen people. Yes, Shmulek, God says, you are the chosen people. Well, says Shmulek, would you mind choosing someone else for the change? <laughs> Laughter. Maybe we are celebrating Laughter. Laughter comes in all forms. Right here in today's Parsha, Isaac, Sarah laughs in disbelief scornfully when told she's going to have a kid at 75. And then next week, having been visited by the miracle of the birth, she declares in delight, God has brought me laughter. Well, God brought us laughter with you too. Our Isaac has delighted us. He has amused us. He has lit up his, our life from the day he was born. Shakespeare's Falstaff, a boastful sort, declares that I am not only witty in myself, but the cause that wit is in other men. Isaac is about the least boastful person on earth, as I think all of his friends here can attest. But if he were braggy, he could say the same. He's funny, and other people are funnier when they're around him. He speaks and jests mostly, and bantering with him is one of life's joys and always was. When he was maybe four, Ayala went to Los Angeles for work, and he said to me, I'm going to miss mommy so much. And I, following the advice of sage post-toddler experts, sought to reassure him, wanting to allay his feelings and fears of abandonment. Don't worry, I'll be here, I said. And he looked at me and said, you know I don't like you, right? <laughs> I, I, I think he liked me. I, I think he likes me now. I know he loves his mother, who has been his rock as she has been mine. He loves his grandfathers, Norman, who is blessedly here with us today, and Bert, who is in Chicago watching this on Zoom, and I am sure beaming with pride. Isaac loved his grandmothers, his grandmother Bobby, whom he sadly only knew as a baby, and his grandmother Midge, whom he was privileged to know until she passed away last year. He loves his aunts, one of whom he only knew as a baby as well, and who knew him and loved him right back, and with her mother, and with Ayala's mother, is likely tuning in right now on Celestial Zoom. Hi, Rachie. And what I have seen practically every day of my life is how dearly Isaac loves and cherishes his sisters his indelible sisters, his smart and kind and thoughtful and endlessly fascinating sisters. I had three sisters. I know what it means to have great older sisters and with whom he shares that taste for laughter. The three of them watched The Good Place together I don't know how many times and listened to the funniest of Broadway musicals, Something Rotten, a hundred times together. And they love John Mulaney, and they love Dimitri Martin, and I don't even know who else. As for Isaac alone, when he is alone without his sisters, he watches every single one of the 742 episodes of The Simpsons he has seen. Every family guy. Who knows, these shows will probably be on the air when he's ready to go to work as an adult, and who would be better to give them new life in the 2030s than the man whose name means laughter? So laughter is not only his name, it is his guidepost as it should be ours. These have been among the worst weeks of my life, of all of our lives, I think. But we cannot allow the evildoers to rob us of the glories of this earth, its beauties, its bounties, its joys. That is what they want from us, Isaac, what they want from us Jews. They want us to sink into despair because that will weaken us. And their goal is to take away from us the miracle that is our state, our homeland, the refuge and the place, as Michal Kadler Wunsch told this congregation last week, that exists now in the wake of the Holocaust because had it existed before, there would have been no Holocaust. Just as there will be no Holocaust now, because there is an Israel. Just as we will live to laugh and to celebrate and to live as Jews. If you go by the way scholars count the first Isaac, the first born Jew, was born around 1830 BCE. 
Here we are then, 3,850 years later, sitting some 6,000 miles and across a vast ocean from where Isaac's father circumcised him in this greatest of cities that did not even exist in his time. Here on this bima is our Isaac, another Isaac, and here he is standing before the ark of his people in Sutton Place Synagogue, this wonderfully welcoming congregation whose words behind me, how beautiful it is when we sit together, has made this shul feel like a home to us in so short a time, Ayala and me, refugees of a kind, and our gratitude to Rabbi Ain and to Cantor Katan and to everyone here is almost without limit. And here is our son, our Isaac, reading from the book that has kept us together as a people through two millennia of statelessness, through the last 75 years of restoration from exile. And Isaac, let me say to you, I know in my bones, down to my marrow, as I welcome you, as we welcome you, your mother and I, named for the firstborn Jew into life as a Jew, that 3,850 years from now, and perhaps millions of miles from this city, that might itself have been returned to dust by the turnings of time in a place we may not even be able to imagine, a place we may not even be able to imagine in an existence we could not fathom. There will be another Isaac. There will even be another Isaac ben Yaakov, Mordechai, Halevi. And that Isaac will turn 13. And that Isaac will stand before an ark. And he will direct his body and his gaze toward Jerusalem on whatever three-dimensional access will make sense to do that. <laughs> And before the scroll that has been our people's binding garment, that Isaac ben Yaakov, Mordechai, Halevi, will say, Baruch et Adonai Hamvarach, and the congregation before him will respond, Baruch Adonai Hamvarach le'olam va'ed. And in short order, he will begin reading the words you read this morning, written down at a time before most of the world even had the wheel. Vayomer Adonai al Avraham, el Avraham, excuse me, lech lecha, because we were here, and we are here now, and we Jews, we will be here as long as there is a here. Mommy and I love you, Isaac, and we will laugh with you as long as we have breath to laugh, because that is what God commanded us as a people by naming the first Jew laughter. Shabbat Shalom.